Hey, look, uh, I was thinking about something traveling home from North Carolina, and given the fact that it's football season, uh, I was thinking about the idea or the concept of good being the enemy of great. And there was a couple examples that came to mind I wanted to share out with you, and they relate to sports, and it's football season, like I said. So, you know, that that's playing a, a a role in my thought process, and I'm a huge Iowa Hawkeyes fan. So, you know, I think about what do Kirk Ferentz and John Harbaugh have in common, the head coach of the Baltimore Ravens? And it was a week after Lamar Jackson tore up uh, an NFL game. You know, here's this dual threat quarterback, and it's not that the NFL hadn't seen that before. They've seen it, and it's been somewhat of a flash in a pan, a bit of an enigma, potentially. The interesting part about John was not only the willingness of the Ravens to draft this young talent, who, by the way, was a Heisman Trophy winner, so it's not like this is completely uh, unforeseen in terms of his ability. But the cool thing was was the Ravens' ability to adapt to his skill set and his talent. Because keep in mind, on their roster, and I, I think about this a lot in terms of our business, on their roster was a guy that won them a Super Bowl, right, a few years before with Joe Flacco. Uh, But they were somewhat muddled in mediocrity uh, in the last couple of years. And John Harbaugh made a decision last year to bring in Lamar Jackson, not just to bring him in in a pro-style offense, but to manipulate, to mold that offense to his talents, to his skill sets. And and the thing that I appreciate about that is is I think John was, was committed in the decision. He also, he wasn't afraid to be wrong. And, and I think, you know, there were, I, I looked up a few things uh, in, in the Baltimore newspapers, you know, articles before that last year, fire John Harbaugh. Is he the right guy? Has football passed him by? He was great, but we're not sure he knows what he's doing anymore. And look at him now. And Lamar Jackson is an MVP candidate. And here they were, you know, somewhat trudging along an average, trudging along an okay he said, if we're going to be great, i got to make a big move. i got to make a big change. It starts with me. I'm going to make the decision, and I'm going to mold the team around it. I liken that back to, again, huge Hawkeye fan here, so a little bit of a homer. But uh, four or five years ago, I think it was uh, 20, I had it up on my computer here, 20, 2014. Iowa finishes the year 7-6. and six. The Boo Birds are out. Uh, Ferentz years have, have, have passed him by. Again, Kirk Ferentz. Uh, Hawkeye coach for 20, 20 years, 22 years, 21 years. He, the, you know, the guy's gotten away from the new style of the game, the spread offense, doesn't take enough chances, uh, has a, a talented talented kid in Jake Rudock, but there was also a, a backup that probably had a stronger arm and, and Kirk was going to give him a chance. So what's he do? He goes into 2015. They self-scout. I think that winner, which I've recommended this, they, uh, the whole team read the book, The Slight Edge, which I remember I recommend you pick that up. I think I've got a blog post about it. If you Google a Slight Edge, I actually have a link to the PDF uh, that you can download. So, But what did he do? New quarterback. And although that I would say that is, is somewhat emblematic of the two changes, it's not prescriptive of the, the change. Kirk started going for it more on fourth down. John Harbaugh has a guy on his staff from Yale looking at analytics now of when to go for it on fourth down. Kirk had a few more trick plays uh, in his book, but he, he was committed. To, they said, we're just good. We're, we have a winning record. We've had a winning record most years. But are we going to be great with this? Are we? And he was committed to the decision. What happened to the quarterback? He transferred, went to play at Michigan. What happened to Joe Flacco and the Ravens? He left. Uh, he got picked up by uh, the Denver Broncos, I think, right? But, like, you think about these things. You think about your life. The context of this is... If things are just going along okay, the problem with that is you're probably bored. And that mediocrity of just okay enough is keeping you away from the side of greatness, right? And each of these guys, they decided to make big choices. They were committed to the big choices. But then they were going to actually make all the other decisions that that first big commitment adapted them to, right? And so they were going to move along and move their rosters and everything along with it. I think it's a really great lesson for life to take a look and say, you know, what's keeping you from this really big uh, opportunity, outcome, pursuit, goal that you're chasing, but then it, you you got to think a little bit different. You might have to think on a different wavelength. There might have to be some different moves you're made, making in your life, but that is, I think it's, a, it's the question that, that answers a hundred other questions. It makes all of your other decision making easier. Uh, so a couple interesting examples. They both tie to football season. They both tie to guys that have been incredibly successful in their career 
that were here in the Boobirds, right? The time had passed them by. They were just do, they were average in their job. And, and I know that's people. I mean, I, th- I think everybody has been there where they're like, you know, is this for me anymore? Can I make the moves that are necessary? And so they reinvented themselves. And I don't care if you're 25, 30, 40, 50, or 65, there is an opportunity for reinvention. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to involve making a big decision and then being committed to that decision on the back end. So something for you to think about. Um, again, something that was just on my mind and want to share it with the group. I thought there could be some, some value there. Uh, and again, uh, I'm a Ravens fan because of Marshall Yonda playing there. Uh, again, former Hawkeye and from a town I grew up in. And obviously, go Hawks. Take care.